Hi friends, Zoe here, and today I'm super excited to talk to you because it's time for part one of our Q&A. So first of all, I just want to thank you all so much for all of your positive comments and your kind words. You truly make my day. You just make me so happy and I'm just so grateful that I have all of you as friends and we have our own little corner of the internet here where we can chit chat. I'm super excited to answer all of your questions. Similar to our last Q&A, because I can be quite chatty and you guys ask such amazing questions and I wanna make sure that I answer them all to my fullest ability, I've decided to split this Q&A up into two parts. So part one, which I'm going to be talking about today is, when and how did you stumble upon the decision to just do it? Uh, all about moving, all about why Rome, and about the Italian language. And then Q&A number two is going to be about my plan. What am I going to be doing there? What about money? Did I say how am I going to survive <laughs> over there? And we have food questions, travel questions, and some miscellaneous questions. So I'm going to get started with Q&A part one. So let's go. Okay, so question number one. When and how did you stumble upon the decision to take this big step and just do it? So this is something that I've always wanted to do. I have such a love for travel, a need for travel, and more specifically in more recent times, I feel like after reading Tim Ferriss's 4-Hour Workweek and Jen Sincero's You're a Badass, you guys know I've read that book a million times, so I just feel like working remotely is truly my dream. I have always been fascinated with working remotely. I just feel like it, it truly is my dream job, but I'll get more to that in a moment. As for the just do it moment, so I feel like there was a few moments in the past year that have kind of led me to make this decision, but I'll let you know what they were. So in March or in the beginning of April, my friend Amberly, you guys have met her before, so Amberly was over at my house and was making dinner for her and I was kind of expressing the fact that I was just feeling unfulfilled. And she's, she's very good with advice and she's known me uh, for quite some time. We met in university, we both went to Vancouver Island University. And she said, Zoe, I don't really want to offend you by saying this, but I think that you've outgrown Toronto. And when she said that, I kind of, I don't know, I kind of could relate to it a little bit. I feel like... I absolutely adore this city. I love the city so much. You guys know that I love it so much, but it's almost been a bit tired for me in this past year, I guess, because I maybe I haven't been fulfilled. And because I'm not fulfilled in my job, I kind of didn't feel fulfilled in the city as a whole. I think that's the best way that I can explain it. Anyway, so that stayed at the back of my mind for a few months, and I realized that I have to do something. I have to, to change this. And the only thing I wanted to do was to go travel. So. I'll let you know about the second big moment that kind of made me make this leap. So I was having a tough time at work and I was putting in some late nights and I remember I got home from work after nine one evening. I think my dad called me or I ended up calling him. I try my hardest not to um, like spill my spill my emotions onto my parents. I was holding in a lot of this, this feeling of un unfulfilledness and just not being happy and just feeling like I worked so hard for a career that I wasn't even sure that I really, really loved. Like, full heartedly, passionately wanted to be there nine to five every day. When my, I was talking to my dad on the phone, he's like, oh, so like, it's after nine. I'm surprised you're not sleeping already. What's going on? I'm like, I just got home from work. And he's like, what do you mean you just got home from work? And I literally just burst into tears. Like. I just burst into tears. I'd been holding this in for so long and I hate to do that to my parents. Normally I call a friend when I'm upset. I just know that they worry, but I just couldn't keep it in anymore. I explained to my dad and my stepmom that it just feels like all I've done is work and go to school. I started university when I was 17 years old. I took summer school every single summer except one summer I took a small Euro trip which I've told you guys about and then I went straight to a consecutive year program in Toronto and then after that I got a job and then another job and then another job and it just kept rolling which was great because I am a hard worker and it was very rewarding but the thing is I feel like the one true time when I felt really alive was when I was in Europe. I felt 
just so inspired by everything and I just knew that I need to go back and I need to go back for a longer period of time. But like I said, you keep climbing, you keep going job to job, getting all the experience you can and then what? So then that question kind of kind of stuck out to me in my mind. Anyway, so back to my story. I felt so bad crying to them on the phone. They called me down and said like go to bed, don't worry, like we'll figure this out. And I was so upset. Like I was like, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna book a one way ticket somewhere and like I'm not gonna come back. Like I just don't know what to do. <laughs> Anyways, I went to bed and then the next day I realized I have to figure out what my next chapter is, what my next life move is because I can't stay here. It's really going to affect my happiness and my personal well-being. So anyways, I was exploring my options and I'll get more into what I'm doing in Rome when I get there, but basically that was kind of like a really big turning point for me. And then after I made the decision that I just was deciding that I was going to move to Rome, I remember walking home from work one day. I walked through a nice park on my way home and I was walking through the park and it was probably like, you know, 6.37 at night and it was so sunny and there's tons of people out there, you know, tossing around a baseball and lying on a blanket reading and I'm walking through there in pants and blazer. Obviously it's like sweating but I'm like when was the last time that I actually had time to enjoy myself like that? I don't have that time here in Toronto because I just work. I feel like I start work at 8.30, come home late at night, I make myself dinner and I have like a little bit of zo time where I'll like meditate or write in my journal and I'll go to bed. I'm lacking that just the enjoyment like I notice these people sitting in the park and I'm like I would love to do something like that but I feel like I don't have the time to do something like that oh I don't know if you guys can relate to that or if you guys get what I'm saying but that was like a moment for me so I'm going to touch on your questions about moving so what did your parents say I've got this question quite a bit so as you know I told you I broke down on the phone to my parents so when I called them with my solution which was going to Europe I told them what my plan was and my stepmom was super supportive as she always is and my dad was a little bit hesitant as my dad is. I remember my dad asked, can't you just go for a month and then come back and then like reevaluate? But I was like, no dad, this, this has got to be like a big life move. I don't know. In the back of their minds, they might have thought that I'm quarter life crisising. Who knows, maybe I am quarter life crisising but I'm proud of it because I couldn't be more excited. I made my decision, my dad was quite hesitant, worried about safety. I assured him that I've done this before, I'll be just fine and this is the one thing I've always wanted. And then he was like, you know what Zoe, I know you and I know that whenever you put your mind to something you always, you always do it and you always get it done so I know regardless of what I say or what I think you're gonna do it so. I'm doing it and my dad and my stepmom have been nothing but supportive of me so I'm so grateful for them. When are you leaving? I fly out of here on September 3rd. I'm taking the red eye and it's a one way Toronto to Rome. So I will be arriving in Rome on September 4th. Will you take all your furniture and car? So first of all, I do not have a car, but I do have furniture like this. <laughs> so you guys have met Rachel before, my girlfriend Rachel, who moved here from BC. So Rachel needs a place to move into. So I'm moving out of my room. I'm leaving my furniture and Rachel is moving in. How convenient. <laughs> because Rachel sold a lot of her furniture before she came out here. So yeah, she needs what I got and I have an amazing place here in Toronto, which I promise you guys, I'm gonna fill my room for this weekend. I'm not gonna let it slide anymore. I have an amazing balcony off of my room, an amazing view of the CN Tower right through that window there. I just have an amazing neighborhood. I couldn't be happier in this hood. So I couldn't be even more happier to pass it on to one of my very best friends who totally Totally deserves it. Oh, and Rachel got a job this week, so good job, Rachel. Let's all give a thumbs up for Rachel. So next, is it for a certain period of time or is it permanent? As you guys know uh, from my working holiday visa video, which I'll link below, I am allowed to stay in Rome for one year, September to September. So I don't have any specific plans on how long I'm going to stay. Like I mentioned in that video, I do have a flight booked home, but it is movable. But I know for sure that I'm going to be going back to BC in August because my best friend Lauren is getting married and you guys met Lauren before too. I couldn't be happier and I wouldn't miss it for the world. So I'm going to be going back to BC, back to Vancouver mid-August and I plan on spending some time on Vancouver Island after that, probably a few weeks with my family. 
because it will be super nice to see them and of course hang out by the ocean, the river. My family does a lot of outdoorsy things and camping so it'll be awesome to participate in that when I get back from my uh, Euro trip. <laughs> Why Italy and not another European country? Why Rome? So I have always had a fascination with Italy and more specifically Rome. When I did my Euro trip, I intended to spend four days there and I ended up spending a total of two weeks there. I ended up leaving, going to Greece and coming back to Rome. So I really loved it and I remember leaving and knowing that I was going to be back. As soon as I could, I was going to be back. So our friend Michael on the channel mentioned that he believes that my past life was in Rome. I thought about that and I was like, wow, maybe that makes sense because I've always had this fascination like I've told you. So this fascination is like a little bit of an obsession, I think. I don't know, I can't. Tell me if this, if you guys have any type of fascination with a place like I do. So that's why I continuously rewatch the Lizzie McGuire movie and Eat, Pray, Love is because they're set in Rome and I just love to see it. I'll constantly Google image search Rome and just look at things. I love watching videos about Rome, like travel videos on Rome. I don't know why I'm so fascinated with it. I really enjoyed my time when I was there, but it's like a whole nother level. Like when I've read Eat, Pray, Love and when I've watched Eat, Pray, Love, I will always watch it up until the part where she leaves Rome and then I'll restart it and watch it because I just love it. I also really love old Italian music, so maybe that kind of ties into the past life thing. Like I absolutely love listening to Dean Martin. Totally makes my day. So language. Do you speak Italian? No, I do not speak Italian yet. Which leads me to my second question here, which is do you plan on learning Italian? Yes, I'm so excited to learn Italian. I've always wanted to learn Italian. And when I did get back from Italy the first time, I actually self-taught myself Italian with Italian for Dummies, a couple of their books, and some apps. So right now I've been using Duolingo and I do have a couple Italian language learning books on my Audible right now. So yeah, I'm trying to learn and when I'm going to be there, I'm going to be taking Italian courses, which I am so excited about. I also have a couple of tandem partners lined up as well, which is awesome. Anyways guys, so this is the end of part one of our Q&A. Part two will be up on Sunday, so be sure to check it out. I'm going to link any videos mentioned below, like my working holiday visa, if you'd like more information on that. That is for Canadians that want to go to Italy, but I assume it is quite similar probably to other countries as well. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed these answers. Looking forward to seeing you in my next video. Love you lots. Bye!